Let me read to you a passage from the fifth chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, verses 38 to 42. It's the Gospel for Monday in the eleventh week of ordinary time, year two. St. Matthew writes, Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, eye for eye and tooth for tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if someone wants to sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. If someone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who asks you, and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. That's from Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 to 42. And what does it suggest to us? Well, one of the accusations that have been long levelled against religious people is that their religion does not seem to make much difference to the course of their everyday relationships with others. They are accused of going to church on Sundays and then that very day of acting towards others in ways that are reprehensible. It is a charge that is all too often unfair, but often enough there is truth in it. But of course, it has been the problem for mankind all along. Man tends to forget that religion ought to inform the whole of his life. Revealed religion is characterized by a strong insistence on the inseparable link between love of God and love of man. Long ago, the prophets inveighed against a religion of mere ritual sacrifice that at the same time entirely neglected the poor and the oppressed. The prophets said that God cared little for the blood of animals while his children suffered at the hands of those who offered the sacrifices. Far more has this been the case with many of the religions of the world. It has often been pointed out that in indigenous societies that have not yet been undermined by an invading or colonial culture, the religion pervades life. It is not sharply separated from the observance of ritual. But even here, I wonder whether it drives a notable concern for others in that society. Be all this as it may, it is evident to all, even to those who do not profess any religion at all, that the link between the love and worship of God and concern for others is profound. And any pra practice of a religion in which there is little of this is a mockery. But now, our Lord takes this to new heights. The Mosaic legislation restricted spiralling revenge by stipulating that an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth and forbidding anything beyond this. Our Lord tells his disciples that this is not to be the rule of their life. Rather, he says, I tell you, do not resist any, do not resist an evil person. If someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. Give to the one who asks of you. Well, what does our Lord mean by this? Well, to begin with, this teaching of today's Gospel comes from the Great Sermon on the Mount, which itself begins with the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes is best interpreted as a window into the life and heart of Christ, and ought be understood in the light of his own practice. So too with the teaching of today's Gospel. What our Lord says here today, we ought to interpret in the light of how he lived. Come to me, he says elsewhere, and learn of me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. That is to say, we are to do what our Lord says here in the way he did it. One's life is not to be characterized by, for instance, revenge. Christ did not take revenge on others for wrongs they did to him, 
and this cannot be said of certain other founders of religions. He had all the power he needed, and far more besides, to defend himself from all wrongs, and to take revenge for what they did to him. But he did not use it for that purpose. He could heal sicknesses, raise the dead, cast out demons, calm the storms, drive out people from the temple, when they were abusing the sanctity of the temple. And as we see in the incident in the Garden of Olives, at the beginning of his passion, he could throw back enemies while scarcely speaking. And all of this by a single word. He was, in other words, all-powerful. But he never used his power to revenge himself on others. We remember how, when passing through Samaria on his way to Jerusalem, the Samaritans of a particular village would not receive him. James and John wanted to call down fire from heaven to punish them. Christ rebuked them and turned to take another way. On the cross, with his enemies reviling him as he suffered for the sins of mankind, he prayed to his Father that they be forgiven, for they knew not what they were doing. So, an eye for an eye and a tooth for, tooth for a tooth was not Christ's way and is not to be the way of his followers. Rather, they are to be Christ-like, even towards enemies. Give to the one who asks you and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you, he says. The words of our Lord should be interpreted in the light of his own example and practice. What he did and how he thought is the key to his own teaching, and we should apply that key as we read his words and ponder on how to live them. Our Lord says, Do not resist the evil person. But of course, he himself did resist evil persons, but in his all-holy way. We are to resist an evil person in the way Christ did, and in the way he would. Let us resolve to bring to our daily life and to our relationships with all others our personal love for Jesus and our desire to imitate him always.